What's up everybody? In today's video, we're going to create a working stopwatch using React. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, let's get started. Within our source folder, we're going to create a stopwatch component. Stopwatch, and this is going to be a JSX file. We will be working with function-based components. Function, stopwatch, no parameters, then be sure to export it. Export, default, stopwatch. In this program, we'll need three different hooks. Let's import them. Import from React, use object destructuring. We'll need the use state hook, use effect, as well as use ref from its location of React. We do need to return something. For the time being, we're going to return a fragment. Okay, let's import our stopwatch. From our app component, we will import stopwatch from its location dot forward slash of stopwatch dot jsx. We will return a single stopwatch component. And that is all we need for the app component. Within our stopwatch component, we'll make a few declarations. We'll be using the use state hook as well as the use ref hook. We'll need to check to see if our stopwatch is currently running. We will use use state. Const is running, and a setter for is running, equals use state. I will set the initial state of is running to be a boolean of false. Our stopwatch is not currently running. We'll also need to keep track of how much time has elapsed. That will also be a state variable. Const elapsed time, and a setter for elapsed time. Again, we're going to use use state. I will set the initial state of our elapsed time to be zero for zero milliseconds. We'll be working with intervals. If we start an interval, we need to clear it if we're not using it. We will use ref to create a constant of interval id ref equals use ref. We will set the initial value of current to be null. When we start our stopwatch, we'll have to get the current time. We'll store that as a reference using use ref. Const start time ref equals use ref. I will set the initial value to be zero. Our start time will be zero milliseconds. A few things we'll need. We'll need to use the use effect hook. We will pass in a function and a dependency array. The dependency array is going to have one state variable of is running. Basically speaking, when we mount our component, and if is running ever changes, we'll perform some side code, whatever's within use effect. This is where we'll start our interval to move time forward. We'll get back to that later. We will create a function to start, to start our stopwatch. A function to stop. A function to reset, and a function to format time, format time. Within our return statement, let's return all the HTML we'll need for this program. I will create a div element to act as a container. This div element will have a class name of stopwatch. Within this div element, we will create a nested div element that has a class name of display to display the time. When we display the time, we will embed some JavaScript and call the format time function. Within our format time function, just so we can display something, I'm going to return a template string that displays a bunch of zeros. Really, I'm just using this as a placeholder. So we are returning a string of a bunch of zeros. We'll have three buttons. These three buttons will be within another div element. This div element will have a class name of controls. We will create a button that has text of start to start the stopwatch. This button will have a class name of start dash button. With this button, we will set the 
on click event handler to be a JavaScript function. We will pass in a callback to the start function to start the stopwatch. Then we need a button for stop. Let's copy this button, paste it, change any instance of start to stop. On click will be a callback to stop. The class name will be stop dash button. The text will be stop. Then we need a reset button. Let's copy our button, paste it, change any instance of stop to reset. We will pass in a callback to the reset function. The class name will be reset dash button and the text will be reset. And that is all the HTML that we need. Go to our CSS style sheet. Now we'll apply some CSS. Within the body of our document, we'll use Flexbox to display each component. Display Flex. I will set the Flex direction to be a column. There's not really going to be any apparent changes until we add more components. Then I will align items in the center and set the background color to be a light gray. But I'll use HSL values. I will set the lightness to be 95%. Okay, let's zoom out. Then I will select the class of stopwatch. This class contains our stopwatch, everything within it. I will again use Flexbox and really I'll just copy these three properties from the body. So display flex, flex direction column, align item center. I will add a border of five pixel solid. Border radius to smooth the corners of 50 pixels. Set the background color to be white. Then add some padding of 30 pixels. All right, let's work on our display next. The text is pretty small. We will select the class of display. Increase the font size to 5 REM. Set the font family to be monospace or some other font that you'd like. Let me zoom back out. I will set the font weight to be bold. I'll change the color. Pick a color for the font color. I will set the lightness to be 30%. I'll add a text shadow effect. Text shadow, two pixels by two pixels for the vertical and horizontal offset, and a blur radius of two pixels. And pick a color. I'm just going to lower the alpha to 75%. Just so it's more transparent. Then add a little bit of margin to the bottom. Margin bottom 25 pixels okay and that is what we need for our display let's work on our buttons next so within our div element of controls i would like to select all button elements within this class select our class of controls select any buttons within our controls class let's set the font size to be 1.5 rem set the font weight to be bold Add some padding of 10 pixels by 20 pixels. Surround each button with some margin, 5 pixels. I will set a minimum width of each button to be 125 pixels. Remove the border with border none. Use border radius to round the corners, 10 pixels. When we hover our cursor over a button, Let's change our cursor to be a pointer. And that does work. I will set the color, the font color, to be white. We'll change the background color pretty soon. We'll also add a transition effect. Let's select the background color and use an ease transition after 0.5 seconds. We will ease. Let's select our class of start button. Class start dash button. Pick a background color. I'll pick something green, meaning go, because we're starting our stopwatch. Background color green, but I'll use HSL values, because I think they look better. 
I've already pre-picked a color. I will select these values for the hue, 115, for the saturation, 100%, for the lightness, 40%. Let's also access the Hover Pseudo class. Let's copy and paste our Start button, access the Hover Pseudo class. When we hover our cursor over the button, what do we want to do? Let's take the lightness and subtract 5%. 5% from whatever it currently is. I'll set mine to be 35%. So the color should get a little bit darker when you hover your cursor over the button. Let's do this with our stop button. We'll copy and paste what we have for our start button. Change start to stop. I'll make the background color red. But I'll select something specific. For the stop button, I'll set the hue to be 10, the saturation to be 90, 90%, and for the lightness, 50%. Let's copy and paste this background color within the Hover Pseudo class. Set the lightness to be 5% darker. And that does work. Now for the reset button, let's make it blue. Change stop to reset. And pick a blue color. For the hue, I'll select 205. 90% for the saturation. For the lightness, 60%. When we hover our cursor over the reset button, I will set the lightness to be 5% darker, so 55%. And that looks pretty good. And we can close out of our CSS style sheet. Let's go back to our stopwatch component. Let's work on the start, stop, and reset functions. When we press the start button, we will call this function of start. So to start the stopwatch, we're going to use the setter for is running and set that to be true. We will set the state of is running to be true. Once we press the start button, we want this program to be running. We also need to set the start time reference. Updating a reference doesn't cause our component to re-render. If a state changes, it does cause the component to re-render. We're going to set the start time reference. This is an object. We will access the current property and set it equal to now we need to calculate what the start time is. So if we were to get the date right now, this is going to return the current date and time in milliseconds minus the elapsed time, which is initially zero. So just to show you what this looks like, I'm going to console.log the current property of my start time reference object. If I was to start or stopwatch, will be given the current date and time in milliseconds since Epic. Think of Epic as when your computer thinks time began. It's usually a date around the year 1970. 1.7 trillion milliseconds has passed since Epic. If I were to start the stopwatch again, you can see that this number increased slightly. We're converting the current date and time into milliseconds. By keeping a reference to when we started the stopwatch, we can see how many milliseconds has elapsed since then. That's kind of the general idea. We can get rid of console.log. We don't necessarily need it. Keep it if you would like. To stop the stopwatch, we're going to set our boolean of is running to be false. That's all we need to do. Now for reset, we're going to set the elapsed time to be zero because we would like to reset everything. Set the state of elapsed time to be zero. And we will also set is running to be false. Set is running false. If you would like to stop the stopwatch when you reset, set is running to be false then. Since we have a dependency array, when we mount this component and any time the state of is running changes, we'll perform some side code. I think what we'll do first is check to see if is running is true. If is running. If our stopwatch is now running, we'll need to create an interval to move time forward. We will use the set interval function. This has two arguments, a callback to a function and a time in milliseconds to repeat this interval. Let's say after every 10 milliseconds, we'll perform some code. I'll use an arrow function. After every 10 milliseconds, we will set our elapsed time to be a new state. We will get the date right now minus whatever our start time was. 
we can use our reference. Start time ref, access the current property. Remember that was in milliseconds. So get the time right now, subtract what our start time was, and that will give us our elapsed time, because we're using the setter for elapsed time. In order to clear this interval, we'll need to keep track of it by its unique ID. The set interval function returns that ID. We will take our reference of interval ID ref. It is an object. We will access its current property and set it equal to that reference. We should add a cleanup function to the end of our use effect hook. We will return a function, a cleanup function. When is running changes, or we unmount our component, what would we like to do? We need to stop the interval from continuing. If we don't, it may lead to unexpected behavior. We will use the clear interval function and pass in that unique ID. Access the current property of our interval ID reference and clear it. That will allow us to clear this interval. So our program stops running. Now we just need to fill in the format time function. We have elapsed time. It's going to be in milliseconds. We need to convert it to hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. We'll start with hours. Let hours equals take our elapsed time. Now to convert milliseconds to hours, you can follow this formula. Take our elapsed time, which is in milliseconds, divided by, there's 1000 milliseconds in a second, times 60 seconds in a minute, times 60 minutes in an hour. Enclose this equation, with the floor method of math, math.floor. Okay, let's calculate minutes. Let's change hours to minutes. What we gotta do is take 1000 times 60, modulus 60. Modulus gives you the remainder of any division. Once our minutes unit hits 60, we need to reset it back to zero. That's why we're adding modulus 60. We don't want it to continue to 60 or something above 60. Then we have seconds. Let seconds equals elapsed time divided by 1000, modulus 60, and milliseconds. Let milliseconds equals our elapsed time, modulus 1000. If you don't want to display all four digits of milliseconds, we can divide this by 10 to display only the first two digits. We will return a template string. We will display the hours colon placeholder minutes colon placeholder seconds colon placeholder milliseconds. Now, if you don't want to display hours, you can remove that. I'll only display minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So here's what's going on currently. Let me stop it. So we can start, we can stop, and we can reset. However, I would like to format the time. I would like to display a leading zero. Well, we can use the pad start method of strings. So let's take hours equals We'll use typecasting to convert hours to a string. Then follow this with pad start method. Pad this number with two zero characters. Let's do this with minutes. Minutes equals convert minutes to a string and then pad it with two zeros. Seconds. and milliseconds. All right, let's see if this works. We can start, we can stop, we can start again, we can stop again, we can reset, we can start, and we can stop. Now the cool thing about doing this in React, our stopwatch is a reusable component. If I were to go back to my app component, I can include as many stopwatches as I would like. Let's include one, two, or even three. These are all individual components that have their own code to run. They all run independently, and I can stop them whenever I would like. 
Alright everybody, that is how to create a stopwatch component using React.